Well, here we are at the 2013 MRS Spring Meeting, and we're joined now by Dr. Yunnan Shah. Thanks so much for being here. Um, congratulations, by the way, on being named to deliver the Fred Cavill Distinguished Lectureship on Nanoscience. Um, it's a significant honor for you, right? Absolutely, yeah. There are so many you know, famous people in this field who were invited to give these lectures before. Is it a highlight of your career? Absolutely. This year is also sort of like a lucky year for me. It's, uh, it's my year, actually. Snake year. <laughs> it is your year. Oh, Off the record. year of the snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are in your career now and about your research as well. All right. Um, so I attended college in China. So uh, then I came to the States for graduate school. So first I went to University of Pennsylvania for two years. I obtained my master degree and then I move on uh, switch to Harvard University got my PhD degrees and uh, all those years I was trained as a chemist so that's why when I started as um, independent investigator uh, we were just uh, uh, involved in the synthesis of uh, nanomaterials and then about 10 years ago I got interested in exploring some of the applications of these materials and one of the uh, areas I um, was most interested in is in really biomedical research. So that's why I switched my career a little bit from chemistry to biomedical engineering about 10 years ago. Well, your talk is going to focus on colloidal nanocrystals. Can you tell us a little bit more about your talk? Okay, uh, colloidal nanocrystals uh, refer to very tiny particles. The diameter of this particle is about like a one millionth of the diameter of your hair. So it's about uh, wow. 100 nanometer below, okay? Uh -huh. And um, when we change the materials from bulk size to very tiny size, you are going to observe a number of very important and interesting properties. So first you can tune the electronic structures. So the opt uh, optical properties, electrical properties will be uh, dramatically changed compared to the bulk materials. So in a sense, you can just manipulate the size of the material to obtain all different types of property, not just changing the composition of the materials anymore. So this is really a new parameter you can take advantage of if you want to manipulate the properties of a material. So what are some of the practical applications of this research then? So in my particular case, uh, we have focused on uh, colloidal nanocrystals made of noble metals. So what are normal metals? Typically have silver, gold, platinum, palladium, rhodium, all these expensive uh, guys. Uh, how expensive they are, you know, platinum, of course. Now uh, the price is about like $50 per gram. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, platinum, uh, all these normal metals are extremely useful in a number of uh, applications, not just making jewelry. Okay, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, in particular, it's in catalysis. If you think about the many of the chemicals, compounds, you know, petroleum uh, compounds, they need to be uh, manufactured with a catalyst that could be based on palladium, platinum, or this. Um, normal matters, including like uh, the cars we drive every day, you have to have catalytic converters mm -hmm. that can help us to keep the environment clean because whatever is emitted needs to be treated first. So otherwise uh, you're going to have CO in the environment, NOx, all these very toxic gases. So that's why every car has to be installed with a catalytic converter. So what's in catalytic converter, basically you have platinum nanoparticles, very, very tiny support on some ceramic structures so that can operate at a very high temperature to uh, remove all these toxic gases. So a lot of uses. How can advances in this field live up to the MRS mission of advancing materials and improving the quality of life? So let me give you just one example uh, for these catalytic converters. Uh, right now, you know, since the platinum uh, supply is very limited, it's one of the rarest matter on Earth. Uh, let me just give you one uh, idea. If you collect all the platinum on Earth, you melt them to make a cube, can you guess how big that cube is? No. <laughs> it's going to be like 6.3 meters on each side. That's the all platinum we have mined so far. Okay, think about all these applications, how many millions of cars we have to, you know, manufacture every day, you know, all this need platinum catalyst. So you would like to really make your catalyst most reactive so you can significantly reduce you know, the amount you need to put there 
So that's why you can make sustainable use of this material, basically. Well, you've been doing this for a long time. Where do you see the field headed in the near term? So, uh, so in the near term, uh, actually now we are working with a number of companies like BASF, Toyota, all these companies, try to really use our materials in the catalytic converters. Yeah, we're talking about this serious application. So maybe in the five or 10 years, we are going to have our materials uh, implemented in all these devices, okay? So that could help us to significantly reduce the loading. You can reduce the cost. You don't have to use so much platinum anymore. Yeah, so it, right now it's about like $1,000 piece for the catalytic converter, maybe in the future you can still maybe maintain the, uh, this price because the price is cheaper than, like every 10 years, something like that for platinum because of demand, right. okay? So you can still maintain this cost. At the same time, you're going to be able to achieve better performance. So that's so, going to be, yeah. So that's good. I mean, you could yield, you could plan, yield yeah. a cost reduction and mm -hmm. meanwhile performance still goes up. What about in the long term? Where do you see it going? Well, long term, uh, there are two faults. One is really fundamental science. We want to advance our understanding uh, in terms of this uh, synthesis, this chemistry, okay, involved in the synthesis because this particles you know, uh, or nanocrystals, they can come in all different sizes or shapes. Shapes actually is very important. They could be cubic, they could be tetrahedral, octahedral, whatever. Uh, actually, one of the specific shape will be the most reactive one for a specific reaction. Okay. So in the future, we would like to have this knowledge. We can engineer this particle shape. So say if you want to catalyze this particular reaction, we will give you this shape so you have the best performance and then for another reaction you can have another shape so you can easily match them actually to form uh, to have you know, basically a uh, most uh, active form of catalyst for all different applications. So many more exciting things up ahead. Uh, Dr. Yunnan Shah, thanks so much for joining us and good well, luck with your you. uh, Fred Cavill yeah. Distinguished My Lectureship pleasure. today. Thank you so much.